Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video I'm going to do a follow-up to my previous video on scrolling parallax backgrounds in 2D. So, uh, a lot of uh, comments on the previous video, and uh, so this is kind of why I'm making this follow-up. I just sort of want to em emphasize that um, the previous video's intention was just sort of like show some ideas and stuff like that. A lot of people have some very specific questions, and there were some performance issues and stuff like that. And I get that, and I guess I really should have thought about that before making the video. I just wanted to make it quickly. So here's a follow-up where we're going to talk about performance issues, and we're going to talk about a couple different ways to do it. And hopefully this will be a little bit more complete of a video, so there isn't as much confusion. So what I have here right now, just to show you what I have, so I have a scene where we have our 2D sample asset controller. We can walk behind some trees, and the background scrolls, and it tiles right here. You can see a seam, which, you know, no big deal, whatever. But the idea is, is that basically we want to get some parallaxing effect here. So very basically, first and foremost, the easiest way we can build parallaxing effect is by actually using a non-orthographic camera, using a perspective camera. So what I have in this scene is in fact a perspective camera, which means that I can come out of 2D view here and I can actually take my backgrounds and I can move them back. All right. And once I've moved them back, I obviously need to do a little bit of scaling adjustments, maybe increase this to 4x4 four four there, and then fix my tiling overlap with, uh, if I come back to 2D and hold down the V key, I can just snap the two together. And then I can do the same with my, my trees in the foreground. I can just basically, in 3D view here, I can bring them forward towards the camera, and maybe up a little bit and then scale them down, let's say 0.5 by 0.5. Let's get their positioning correct here. Something maybe along those lines. And by doing that, I get a natural parallaxing effect. Oh, those trees need to come down a bit more, don't they? But the idea is that I get, you know, a fairly natural built-in robust parallax effect without really having to do a whole lot of work. All right, so this is the way I would highly recommend you build your parallaxing backgrounds or scrolling backgrounds if you are building a game that's not like an infinite runner, right? Um, obviously, there's a little popping there because, I don't know, something's going on with the script, but it's highly relevant. But if you're just building a game that's a basic platformer where they're moving left and right and they're jumping up and down and it's not consistent motion, I highly recommend using a perspective camera. Uh, or maybe just a perspective camera to see the foreground and the background, an orthographic camera to see the player, or whatever you happen to need to do, right? Uh, but doing so will will make things a ton easier. A lot of the questions that people were asking was, well, now I want to to link up this scrolling background with the player, and now I want to do this, and now I want to do that. And, uh, and it's a lot harder because to get the background to scroll if my player can stop moving, right? Because then the, the player has to be like, hey, world, I stopped moving, so you should stop moving, and so on and so forth. And, it, you know, it's, that's not really a good way of going about it, right? Or, or making the, the background actually reduce the amount it's moving and the foreground increase the amount it's moving based off the player moving. And so like, it's just a pain, right? So avoid doing the other way I showed you. If you're making a game where the player moves around and stuff like like this, right? My intention was just to show you a technique, um, you, you know, for like infinite runners and things like that. So let's kind of talk about that now. All right. So obviously built in perspective camera, great way to get parallaxing effect without really having to do a lot of work. So, okay. So I have another scene here. Let me pop over to that scene and sort of show you what I've got going on. And uh, uh, no, I don't want to save any of that. Okay. So here's my other scene. And my other scene has just a, a plane, all right, a plane with this background. This background is now set up to be a texture and not a sprite, okay? Um, because the second way, the way I, I've showed you before and the way I'm going to show you now, uh, does not work with sprites. It has to be on textures because we're going to do a texture offset. Now, people tested this out and said the texture offset method works really poorly on mobile. And you're absolutely correct. The way I showed you how to do it, um, I wasn't... I wasn't thinking it does perform ter terribly on mobile. Um, and the issue is that we didn't, we didn't cap, you know, how big the numbers were getting and things just spiral out of control really quickly and things become very non-performing very quickly. So I wasn't really thinking about mobile. I wasn't really thinking about optimization. I was just like, Hey, here's a neat trick. So I'm going to show you a much more optimized way of doing this. Uh, and it's actually rather performant on mobile. Uh, a lot of people were saying, is it easier to actually physically pan the background and have two that keep flopping, right? Uh, versus the texture offset. And the fact of the matter is, is they're pretty much the same. 
Uh, in one hand, you have the texture offset, which is what I'm going to show you. And on the other hand, you have to manage the moving the transforms and, and the switching of positions, right? If there is any performance difference between the two, it's completely unnoticeable. I've run both of them for extended periods of time on mobile, and they both worked exactly the same. So if there's a performance issue, it's so small that we could just assume it's not a big deal. Um, you know, obviously, leave in the comments any evidence you might have to claim that one is faster than the other. I'd be curious to hear, but I've, I've never encountered an issue, so I'm going to assume it's not a problem. So I have this quad here, and this quad has on it, uh, besides the background, uh, this background scroller script, background scroller script right here. So let's take a look at that background scroller script. So what we have here is we have uh, our basic script, and what we can see here is we have public float speed, uh, public static background scroller current. So what I enabled here is a, a reference to itself so that we could start and stop uh, based off the whether or not the player was moving. This is not a good way to do this. I'm just going to point this out right now. I'm showing you because I know someone's going to ask. All right. Uh, this method of scrolling the background, right, where the, the background uh, – is basically texture offset is for games like infinite runners where the player is just always running and it's also for games where the player doesn't actually physically move the player stays at the same spot in the background and everything else moves right to left to make it seem like the player is running okay um, so i'm going to show you how to make it so that when you actually press the right button the background scrolls but just know that that's it's not a it's not a great way just use what i showed you before use the natural parallax uh with a perspective camera if that's what you want but, okay, so what we have here is we have a static reference to itself, which we set in our start method, okay? Uh, we have the current position of the texture offset and the speed we want to increase by. In our public go method, which is what we're going to call, I have position plus equals speed, and if the position is greater than 1, subtract 1, because texture offsets go between 0 and 1, so that's all we really need to manage, all right? And then all I'm doing is setting my render uh, material main texture offset to that vector position. So nothing really crazy here. Before I showed you with time.time .time right here to just get a scrolling effect, and that's where the problem comes in. If we just put time.time, .time, the number gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually it becomes very non-performant, and we have all sorts of issues. So this is what clears that up. So I really should have had that in the first video. That's my my apologies. I just wanted to make a video quickly, and, and I made what I made. So hopefully this can answer some of those questions. So we have this whole thing here, and if I wanted to make this as an infinite runner, I would just make this the update method and remove public. And actually, let me show you that. Um, if I just change this to update, get rid of that, right? Back in Unity, if I run this, we'll see the background scrolls. And actually, it's, scroll it's scrolling like crazy. One, one moment here. Uh, the reason it's scrolling like that is because... I have this set up still to be a sprite from my previous scene. So let me set that to texture with repeat. There we go. And so now everything scrolls really fast and, and, and whatnot. Okay, so that that's one way we can do it. And I'm going to make sure I'm set to, yeah. So, okay, so that's what happens if we have that, you know, as the update, right? And we can slow it down by decreasing speed and whatnot. Um, but let me change this back to being go. And so what I want to do instead is in my platformer 2D user control, just for this particular one, this can be wherever you're reading in the left and right, right? Here's where we're reading in the horizontal axes. Um, in this particular code, I'm just saying if H is greater than zero, find our current um, background scroller and just go, which is going to make it scroll left to right. Again, this is very primitive, okay? Um, this is not a be-all, end-all solution for everybody, so don't just think you're going to grab this, throw it in your game, and it's going to work. I'm just showing you kind of the basic idea behind this, is we can scroll base uh, this way, right, where we're just having a static reference and we're just saying go. I'm telling you right now this is not a good way to go about that. If you want your scrolling to be dependent on the character's actual movement, use the first way I showed you, not the second. This way I'm showing you here is for things like infinite runners and stuff like that. But anyway, so we've got this in here. If I come back to Unity, uh, I can just choose the 2D character because I'm using the 2D character from the sample assets. I can set its max speed to zero, which it's already set here. I'll hit play. The scroll background will scroll until I hit the right key, and now the background is scrolling, and we have a parallax effect there. 
And again, we could make it so the, the trees, I obviously removed the trees from the scene. The trees would have to move physically, actually move from right to left. And we could again create a, a controller for that uh, using the, the static script or whatever. But again, I will, I will say again that making the, the, the texture offset background scrolling based off the character input like this is not a good idea. Uh, only if you wanted parallax. Um, the much better way to use this texture offset is if you have a continuously scrolling background, especially one that maybe gets faster and faster as the game gets more challenging, but it's always moving and the player is just running in, in place, right? So anyway, so that is my follow-up video. Two real quick methods to achieving this. Obviously, you're going to want to do something very customized for your games. Um, you know, not it's not one solution fits all. If you have questions, obviously, please feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, I will also say that there's always a better way. So this way is not necessarily um, the best way. Every situation can be made better, you know, with a custom solution for your specific game. Um, both of these methods might work great for one game and terrible for another game and so on and so forth. So um, the idea is just to kind of make you familiar with how these things work and with the the concepts. So uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully that cleared up some of the uh, the questions or issues that came about from my previous video, and I do apologize for that. That's what happens when I try to make something quick and, and I don't really think things through. So um, hopefully this is better, and uh, and everyone has a great day.